Hey guys, welcome back. Friday, December 3rd. Finally. Finally. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Whew. Hope you had a good day in the market. Hopefully it was as good as my day. Losses and all. We are going to talk about it. Talk about the options. Talk about what's going on with the market and GameStop. And why this is very good. Uh, sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. Here's our Twitter if you want to follow us on here. It's at Happy Money YT. And we have a Discord server as well. Come chat on there, it's in the description. Um, yeah, we've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, on this channel, on Reddit, um, a lot of GME investors that kind of know what's going on have been uh, have basically dug up information and learned a lot about <laughs> the inner workings of the market, um, as well as just anybody that's basically has a very basic understanding of how the market works, knowing that it's very overvalued. Um, so this this crash that uh, I think we're beginning to see that the volatility of it, but I think this is the very beginning, and probably see some probably see some bounces, but beginning of at least a, a bear market to possibly a violent crash. I uh, don't know how long it'll last or how low it'll go, but uh, yeah, I think 2001, 2008 uh 20s any of those time periods you could look back and say uh i think we're i think we're coming up to something similar a similar event so i like to look back to 2008 that was the most recent um and as you saw we're in kind of a bearish bearish time it's it's a different reason and it's probably going to be more more violent and quicker than it happened in 2008 but uh 2008 kind of went bearish for about a year on the market when it was being pulled out and then the actual crash was uh, about a year after that um i i don't know when that'll all happen but i think uh, i think it'll be quicker than this and i think it's very possible to be much more significant than this um 2001 uh wasn't maybe as the same amount of velocity actually if you look during this crash, this was, this was a weekly, 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 weekly. So it was five weeks, basically. Huge decline in the overall market. Whereas 2001 was a big crash, but this was maybe the biggest section of it. February 2001. That wasn't as much of a decline as 2008. Um, so every time we've seen, had a crash, it's been kind of more violent, quicker, more velocity. 2001 was fast. 2008 was bigger and faster. And then COVID, really, I mean, this was the biggest fastest basically maybe not the biggest but the fastest i don't have charts from like great depression that sort of thing but uh i'm assuming it was a bit a bit slower um at any rate yeah i think we're uh i think we're coming up to it and we've honestly been waiting for this for a long time uh many many months i didn't i didn't go long on any stocks all through here just anticipating it for for too long too early and i think now it's finally Finally here, and uh, why that's good is because it's needed for a healthy market, as well as uh, cleansing GameStop of its uh, over-leveraged short positions against it, which should cause it to squeeze, and that's kind of what we're anticipating. So GameStop, this, uh, you know, if this was a dip all the way down to like 40, then I'd be like, wow, this is the Volkswagen dip. I am stoked. Um, I'd be very, I'd be much more confident in that, that it's the proper dip before the squeeze. Uh, this definitely still could be the dip before the squeeze, given this is a massive one. This is basically $100 in two weeks. Um, but it's not, it's not so big that it's like, wow, okay, this is it. Um, but it might, they might not be able to dip it that far. It might not dip that far before it squeezes or it still could this could just be kind of the beginning of it honestly so i have to wait and see um if you look back at kind of volkswagen and when that squeezed during the 2008 crash uh well you've all seen the, the charts the 
you are here and then this dip and then this and all that stuff um here's kind of the volkswagen squeeze but yeah as you saw i mean th this was kind of the whole market was kind of frothing at this time also even when volkswagen was kind of rallying it was kind of the, maybe the beginning of the squeeze but volkswagen came as a surprise so it's, it's happened different than gamestop this was the surprise right here surprise dip and then the the squeeze is porsche uh the gme squeeze is not it's not one sudden surprise move um if jimmy has an announcement that kind of i guess forces it that will be somewhat of a surprise but as far as i know on the history on this this was an actual surprise on how much how many shares porsche actually owned a volkswagen and so the shorts had to basically close their position in a hurry and they're all scrambling that's that's the issue with a short short squeeze when it's basically from retail because there's not there's not some big single player that can kind of initiate it with uh with announcing a position or something like that um, but the company can with positive news and basically long long investors putting pressure on it um, or i mean of course physically can initiate it with uh some type of dividend or moving moving gme off of the stock exchange onto blockchain exchange or whatever whatever could potentially happen of course the physical removal of, removal of it where they'd have to close their positions would of course cause a squeeze too but um, this dip here, I don't know if the dates on here are right. Friday, October 24th. October, so that's a month, month of time. So that's not actually a whole lot of time from October. And then if you look on, uh, so October to November, look just on the, the spy. Yeah, right here, look. <laughs> very interesting so there's October to November here's November so literally that month um, there's October 3rd to November 7th that was the, the most violent part of the 2008 crash um, and I, I that that charts right I mean I've heard it's right during that and when I've looked at other charts it was it was during the uh, during the crash and uh <laughs> if you look at this so basically this huge dip before the squeeze that you all see on the chart that is the stock market crashing that's not some other thing going on that's all all of the money being pulled out of the stock market and crashing and and then them and then them closing their uh their short position and making this thing squeeze so um this this could just be the beginning of this honestly as far as supports and that sort of things in TA, we will look at that. Uh, since Volkswagen was more of a more of a surprise, I'm not sure if they'll they'll have all the or yeah, I'm not sure if they'll have all the tools on GME like they did with Volkswagen because at that point they weren't worried about their short position. These guys have been literally preparing for a year now on how to angle this and manipulate it and how to kick the can. So they're using you know ETFs, options, dark pool, whatever. Um, the Volkswagen thing, I don't, they, they didn't have to, they just had the short position and that was it. And it wasn't even big. It was like 20% short interest, not 2000% or whatever GME is. So anyways, that being said on the Volkswagen one, they were maybe able to then start using those other tools to bring, bring it down and bring it down with the rest of the market before they had to start covering. Whereas GameStop, that would be my one argument to where they won't be able to bring it down that far is, oh, because they're already using all their tools to suppress it where it's at and uh they don't have any more that being said yeah uh maybe maybe it could come down more i'm not sure but uh yeah we're looking at ti here uh a lot of a lot of dropping today and i i'm stoked i i speak this in a in a solemn way because yeah this is this is getting serious now i mean the market overall this is gonna wreck a lot of a lot of uh a lot of people not just people that you might think you're angry with or don't like but a lot of good people too so um anyways yeah here we are it's huge huge candles on spy volumes picked up a lot it's uh it's getting it's getting there now um and gamestop has come down with it and it's not just gamestop i mean a lot of a lot of uh i mean docu signed with their earnings that was a huge huge market cap that just got wiped 50 percent off of there um tesla's huge tesla hasn't come down as much we have a bearish play on this. 
Uh, Apple not really either. It's kind of held up pretty well. So you kind of look look for these laggers if you think this uh, if you think this crash is really coming and how bad it will be. Facebook has had a big correction since its highs, but it's still I mean it's still come down a lot. So kind of look for the laggers and think well it is going to happen. It'll it'll start with uh, the high PE ratio. You know the overvalued stocks, <coughs> EVs. Um, no, anything that has a has a high uh, higher high PE ratio. Rebeans come down quite a bit. Um, but yeah, and game so GameStop it's really just come down with it. I was actually looking at, I mean, lots of just random stocks or have already not crashed but corrected so far. I'm mean, looking just Square right here. This is this looks like a this looks like a Wyckoff uh, distribution. Yeah, big distribution phase I'd say. So probably a lot of move, room to the downside on this and. I think PayPal's actually been rallying though. No, oh, look at that, PayPal. Wow, so yeah, it's it's, it's starting to happen with certain stocks and the overall market's starting to see it too. Um, GameStop, on the other hand, we weren't sure if we'd make a higher low than this, 170, so I was thinking maybe 175. Uh, I did mention you could find this support or potentially down here. And if this, I mean, this is looking more and more like uh, could be the final dip based on the overall market and how much other stocks are dipping so um with that being said if you look back also this this still is a higher higher low than here and the same thing happened look back here so we're like oh we're making higher lows higher lows higher lows great and then we come down and we make this low and this is like oh this is a higher low right but then it keeps coming down further like oh what that's a lower but this this low is still higher than these so it did continue to make higher lows on its way down. And that might be what these two lows were, you know, um, a low like this where this was a higher low, but it wasn't wasn't on the same trend line. We're looking at these lows here. Now we jump those to this low. Not to say this low on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday can't come down to this 150, 145 and, you know, find support there or even lower. I mean, if you look at the Volkswagen chart, uh, again, I could hear the argument saying it, it can't happen like that just because what I mentioned, but uh, I could because the mark, I mean, the mark is the very beginning kind of of this market. If this is a market crash correction, um, that this is kind of not the very beginning, but it's, it's close to the beginning just price wise. I mean, you know, we're, we're pretty close to the beginning. So that, I mean, if, if the spy is going to come down to, you know, 300, um, you know 200 if you look at the dips here so this was another it wasn't a crash but 2018 i can't remember the repo was this the repo crisis uh 2018 dip here and then rallied up and then the covid crash was actually a lower dip and i've seen some people say well this next dip is going to be even lower just just if we're following that trend i don't know if i'd necessarily buy into that or not but if it is a great depression type crash then uh yeah i mean it you know <clears throat> It could be, could be lower down to that 200, 200 range, you know, back where the stock market before quantitative easing and printing of money back here where it was more natural growth, I think. Um, or if you want to say that, maybe back to 70s when we're still on the gold standard. Uh, at any rate, that's our trend line right now, which is kind of aggressive, but that's what we've been doing for resistance. We didn't even make it this last time. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so with that, I mean, if, if the spy, if we see it come down, this could be the Volkswagen one lasted a month, right? I mean, that, that's what this chart's saying. I should look at other timelines. I think that's about right though. Yeah. A lot of them say it's their September, that'd be October. So the dip lasted about a month and the rip. So that would mean, and that the same with the market, that was the most volatile time was that month. So give us a little timeline here. We look at weekly candles. I'd say it started last week, 1126. So two more weeks maybe, maybe more. But if we're really gonna get a, a big crash, I don't think it'll start from the top here. I think it'll, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's gonna look probably different than uh, 2008 because it was already bearish for months actually a whole year before that crash so um volkswagen's chart specifically 
probably uh, I mean if we had a if we say it had a month of this we would be about about a month in right because this was basically two weeks ago we had this high of 253 now we're down to 157 so if you say two more weeks that would go along the thesis also of them dumping on earnings so um, oh I just lost my RSI weird so uh, yeah, if we kind of consolidate here next week, or even come down more, and then coming into earnings, they're able to dump it, say that 145, or maybe we're already at 145, then they dump it further to that, you know, down here, 132, 118, um, you know, a serious, serious drop. Then we could be, you know, that, then I'd be like, okay, this is feels like the Volkswagen dip since we've held this trend for a whole year, this upward trend. Um, it's been strong support, but I only think they could do that if the whole market, if it had the pressure of the whole market coming down. So let's quick go over the options here, guys. Um, I, I am stoked <laughs> that this is finally happening, even though it's wrecking my accounts. Uh, we've made some money on the way down with it, but uh, of course, I was not expecting another 9% day today. I thought it'd be a little bit slower. The RSI, it's scared to show up now because it, it knows how oversold it is. Um, yeah, why don't you copy? Let's sync. Weird. Okay. Um, but yeah, so. I actually closed out of my bearish my call credit spread this morning on on GameStop thinking it was pretty close to money it was 185 at the time that was close to the money it looked like it could rally we were bullish on the MACD we had green over the nine we actually had a divergence there also um, just a little rally consolidation the market coming down though definitely added pressure to it um, that, that was a pretty big deal spy so it looks like we're kind of rallying back up to VWAP here into close um, I did buy actually more shares on this account, this WeWo account. I haven't bought shares in a long time. So I bought like 20 more shares on here, about this 170 range, uh, or no, 165. I figured I'll buy some in at 165, and then if we go to lower, I could always buy more. And yeah, we came down and clipped 159.12, so uh, 160. And on the daily, on the daily actually, the, uh, RSI is still it's still pretty high so um, seeing that makes me think okay well we could come down more just because there's more room it, it's come down slow enough to where the RSI is pretty high uh, that being said on the hourly though we do have these divergences See, that's not one but this one is well it depends on depends on uh, Monday's hour, honestly, because if this just keeps dropping, it might get a lower RSI. Um, but yeah, on the daily here, we're at 34, which which is very low on Jimmy's RSI. We don't usually get that low, as uh, I think Dink pointed out. Uh, last time we were that low, we were at this this low, 29, 29 on the RSI on uh, 8.4. So, wow. Look at that. Last time we were even that low it was in February 2020. That's crazy. On the daily chart, this one GameStop was $4 a share. Sad. Um, yeah, so options we got. Just show you the history real quick. Tried to roll, tried to roll stuff. Used all my margin. They said I was gonna have tons of margin buying power still and cash buying power. Then I did it and it says I have like none. <sighs> Freaking jerks. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but bought to cover. So this is the call credit spread I closed. Um, I opened up a put credit spread, or maybe this is the one I rolled. And then I think I opened up another put credit spread for next week. Probably needed to... Uh, I, I could have waited on that for sure. And if it's up a little bit next week, I might close it just so I have buying power. In case I want to buy some calls for earnings. Um, I did open some 450 calls for next Friday. Uh, and that they actually have gone up in value with the stock dropping. Uh, the IV just is going up since the stock is dropping. Like, IV goes up either way. It's volatility up or down. 
So. Um, this one closed. Yeah, okay, that's that call credit spread. I think it was all weird. Um, yeah. So I'll show you this. 450. Look at this thing. It's up 16%. So I'm going to show you a little, uh, little lesson in IV. And I can figure it out. Yep. So look. If you look at the price down here, this was a level of 23 cents. And if you look at the stock, when that was, so here's the price of the options, basically. This tick right here, 23 cents. Uh, that was actually yesterday. This call was was uh, cheaper yesterday. <laughs> and then even today, after I got it, I got it around here, 34 cents at 12.45. So right here, this call that I have was actually cheaper got more expensive as it came down here just from the IV going up as well as the higher the higher premiums for earnings so um yeah this thing's gone up now to 38 cents <laughs> and look now that the stock is actually climbing up it's coming back down the, this this call premium isn't that crazy so look at this when did the, when did we find a bottom to start rallying 1505 literally right here that's right when the call started losing value as we started going up Yep, <clears throat> that's crazy. Um, I just close that. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> uh, other trades today, kind of crazy. In lighter moods, uh, let's see. TCAT shares down ten percent. Paysafe's down six percent. This is my trading account, so probably swinging these. Wish is down three and a half. Birds, let's see where you're at. Only down four percent. This thing's actually held up really well for such a red day. And then yesterday it was up twenty percent in a red day. For the whole market and for it to hold up that well it's uh it's kind of impressive really this will close out the bbby call credit spread and then on our uh, theta account we have these uh cover calls that should close out i always close them for just the minimum i have a one dollar one dollar bid in there and then yeah then we have the 450 calls for next week i rolled this put credit spread I rolled this put credit spread. I had to spread it out by one strike, unfortunately, but it's okay. Uh, use a lot of margin on this one. <clears throat> um, so I rolled this one to two Fridays from now, the 207.5, 217.5. But for me to basically make it out of this thing, uh, at least break even, I need to be positive like 15 grand on it because that's basically what it cost to close the other one at max loss so uh that's what i'm waiting for on this one but if it works out we'll be up 30 grand and so about 15 overall when the play's over that's pretty soon however if we, this is the volkswagen dip or the dip before the squeeze then uh it might not be we might be might be in the, the end throes of this squeeze play and then i'll just have to talk about uh Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, the, t the bearish play we have on Tesla is is doing well. I, I don't know if I should close it or just keep going. I mean, I think it's going to keep going. The put debit spread and a call credit spread. So basically the call credit spread funds the put debit spread. So this is the call credit spread. So I, re I receive a $2,600 credit to open that. And then this put debit spread costs $1,200. Um, so that's filling in that gap. You can watch yesterday's video about filling the gap on uh, Tesla. Here's a little bullish play around SPY. Of course, it's worthless. Here's our bearish plays on SPY, which uh, these might be actually out of the money next week, and I'll be able to just close them. So margin requirements on GME suck, so I can't hold a huge position on that. SPY, on the other hand, I can just keep rolling those indefinitely. Neo puts, these are actually up like 100% today. I tried to close half, but wasn't able to. Fine to just hold those. Hold them. Uh, Long-term account, I haven't even looked at it today. There's no no reason to. Spies get nice little bounce here. Help is is actually positive. That's interesting. So that's what I got for you guys. Hope you have a good weekend. Chill out. Um, if you don't have shares of GME, you want to know when to buy. I'm just buy whenever you feel like it. But uh, we haven't seen a reverse yet. We haven't found a floor really or support. So I did get some shares today. Um. But yeah, I would 
I like to buy once the momentum shifted. So say it's coming down here, not buying on its way down, not even buying on the bounce, waiting for it to kind of come back down and retest. And then you see the momentum shifted with indicators like the, the MACD is a good one uh, or the other moving averages you have here. So I would be buying somewhere around here. So you're not trying to time the bottom or the top. I try to time the bottom today on it and drop another 10 bucks. So that's what happens. And that's why I like to do momentum. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on Discord. Peace out.